Hi everyone, it's Savannah here. As some of you may know, A-Level Results Day is coming up for exams I know a lot of you didn't do, but it's coming up. And hopefully some of you will be waiting to get a confirmed place for maths. So if you're waiting for your results to go to university to study maths, you might be feeling a bit worried because you might have missed out on some months of revision or something and it's perfectly normal to feel like that especially because maths is one of those things that you can forget if you're not doing it for a long time it happens to me all the time i go back to uni and i'm like did we learn this i'm going into my third year at the university of nottingham studying maths and i want to talk to you about what i think is the essential maths that you need to know at university because there's some things that i haven't looked at since a level and yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I do think that the A-levels do prepare you quite well for a maths degree and perhaps this list would be shorter if it was me telling you the maths that you definitely didn't need to know. And before I get into this, just a very, very small disclaimer. Remember that your mileage may vary with this. I think at Nottingham in our first year we did quite a broad range of things. We did a bit of statistics, we did a bit of mechanics, we did a bit of pure maths. So in that sense, I feel that I've got a fairly thorough knowledge of the sort of maths that you need from A-level going into university. But of course remember that every maths university course is different, so I'm trying to keep it as broad as possible and talk about the things that you almost definitely will come across again in your maths degree. So I hope that all makes sense. Of course you could do things that I, I might not mention or things, but these are the things that almost every mathematician is going to study at some point from A level and I think it would be really good to make sure you've got a good idea of all this before you start at university. Another note I want to make before I start is if you are preparing for A level results day then good luck and if you're a bit worried or you're not sure what grades you might be looking at come this time next week then I have a video that I would like to emphasis subtly promote to you which is about how I prepared for A level results day. I'll put it in the tab thing up there and I'll put it in the description as well and I really prepared for A-level results day and I went into it feeling really calm knowing that if I missed my grades I had a plan on what to do and how to make sure that I still got a good university spot so definitely watch that video if you're a bit worried about your grades or you're just getting ready for A-level results day because that helped me feel a lot more calm and put together if I had gone into clearing, it wouldn't have been like a big panic and a shock. I had a, like a battle plan of exactly what I needed to do. So I felt quite calm. So that really helped me and yep, give that a watch if you're interested. Okay, so number one, and this one is probably a bit obvious to you all, but it's differentiation and integration. Make sure you know those back to front, all your differentiation rules, all your integration rules. Those will pop up all the time. At university, you're very unlikely to get a question where it will just be solved this integral, but you often might find yourself having to do quite complex integrals as part of longer questions. And you'll be doing integrals with brand new terms or concepts that you might not have heard about before. So it's a really good idea to make sure you know all your integration rules, all your sort of standard forms of integration, integration by parts, all that sort of stuff. Make sure you know that back to front. That was my favourite part of A-level, so I was okay with that, but, but if you're not, make sure you brush up on it. <laughs> Speaking of, I learned a really good way of doing integration by parts at A-level, so if you want me to go through that at some other point then let me know. Okay, so the next thing is differential equations, and those come up a lot as well. They'll come up for, th for any sort of modelling that you may do, which is in stats or all the applied maths. Differential equations will be used for any sort of modelling you might be doing. That could be in statistics or it could be in applied maths as well. Yeah, they're really, really important. Like, there's like two or three modules at Nottingham that are just about differential equations, and I did one of them this year. And yeah, make sure you've got a good idea of how to do second order and first order ones. And you'll be set. <laughs> One thing that came up in first year but hasn't come up since probably because I didn't take any more pure maths after first year is functions and domains. That came up quite often. I remember at um, A level I found it a bit tough to understand but yeah I know it better now. <laughs> so functions and domains and sort of how that works can't hurt to brush up on that as well. Thirds and index laws. I think we first covered index laws at like GCSE so 
hopefully you'll be okay at it. If you're like me, you're probably not. I still have to look up index laws, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, make sure you've got somewhat of an idea about those. <laughs> Sketching graphs comes up a lot at university as well. Most university exams calculators aren't allowed and if you've been doing A-level where nearly every exam is a calculator exam then obviously your mental arithmetic might be a bit low but also if you use maybe a graph, a, a graph, graph, graph sketching calculator if you're using one of those then, then you might be a bit rusty at sketching your own graphs and things so make sure you're good at sketching graphs I don't know what the new specs got in it but in FP2 which I did, which was the last year of the old spec, we had a bit of graph sketching. Complex numbers, again pretty important, covered in first year. One massive mistake that I made in my first year of my maths degree was when they would talk about content from A-level, like they'd introduce us from base no knowledge to complex numbers, and I would just like switch off, I'd be like, huh, I know this, I'm fine. But then I'd miss out on slightly more developed view on complex numbers or something further we were doing because I was I thought I knew it which is quite silly and arrogant of me <laughs> so yeah uh, complex numbers you know the e to the i theta sort of form all those different forms involving that really good for you to look at as well if you haven't done further maths don't panic too much everyone I know at uni who didn't come in with further maths has done fine and in some cases even better than people who did do further maths and I think that might be because they knew that people who come to uni having done further maths had a bit of an advantage over them so they were a bit more ready to tackle problems whereas people who did further maths like me rested on their levels a bit in the first few months. Don't be too worried if what I'm saying you're thinking, oh my gosh, is that further maths? I've never covered that. More important than any of this is just making sure you focus in those lectures, which is hard. <laughs> Another thing that you're likely to come across is matrices. Now, a lot of maths at uni becomes computer sort of maths. You'll need to learn different sorts of coding. It's absolutely fine if you haven't done any coding before. I had never done any and I was feeling a bit apprehensive about it, but they were really helpful and we had lots of good notes on it. So matrices, eigenvectors, eigenvalues, those can come up quite a lot, especially if you, you decide to go down the computing route. And going on with that, numerical methods like newton Raphson and uh, bisection method, that was it, I couldn't think of it then. Vectors, those are important, those do come up a lot, especially if you take applied modules like me. Going into maths at uni, I knew that I wanted to study like the cool like relativity electromagnetism modules which I'm doing next year. To do that you need to be pretty good with your vectors. <laughs> so yeah, so that could be something you might decide to look at before uni. For the more statistics minded of you, basically my modules on stats in first year covered a lot of what we had done in S1 and S2 and the stats modules that you do now at A level will most likely be the same. Set theory, the Venn diagrams and things, that sort of stuff. And last thing is sort of series expansions. I don't think we've actually done that much binomial expansion at uni. I remember we did loads of it at A level but not really at uni. That doesn't mean don't rule it out as appearing, not appearing though. Another one that's not really used is um, the double angle formulae. At least in my experience it's not really been used like the sine a plus b equals blah blah blah. You might use the uh, sine 2a equals, gosh what is it now? You do use it, I promise. It, I, I just have a really bad memory. Uh, the sine 2a, cos 2a, tan 2a. You, I'm sure you know what I'm on about if you've done A-level maths. <laughs> but yeah, even though I can't remember it, that's just on me. <laughs> that doesn't mean it doesn't come up. <laughs> Generally most stuff in core maths papers you're likely to come across, but you would use them as part of a bigger question. Another thing we never really did was stuff with the parabolas, like the focus and directrix sort of stuff, and we didn't do solids of evolution either, at least I haven't come across it yet. Polar coordinates can definitely be helpful, um, yeah, I, I've used polar coordinates this year. I liked polar coordinates quite a bit at A-level, now I'm at uni, I, I can't remember them as well and I'm a bit like, hold on a sec. <laughs> Interestingly, even though I went straight down the applied route at university, we haven't used much mechanics stuff. I don't really know why. Perhaps if you go into engineering or physics you might end up using more mechanic stuff but as a math student, even though I've taken like all the applied modules this year, we haven't done much sort of mechanics. Okay, and that's pretty much it I think. 
if you are starting a maths degree I don't want you to feel put off by this and think oh my gosh I've got to revise all this stuff oh my gosh I know none of this like honestly it will be fine I promise you they will basically teach you everything in first year from scratch anyway it's just if if you want if you have the time to do it and you don't mind spending your time on a bit of uni prep then this could be something to just go over make sure you've got the notes for like please don't worry if you don't remember any of this stuff I promise you it will be fine just make sure you bring your notes to uni <laughs> one thing I found useful was before I went to uni I took pictures of all my A-level notes and then if something came up and I was like oh what was that A-level thing I can't remember maybe it was intellectual something I could look at my phone and be like uh <laughs> so that could be an idea but yeah I don't want you to stress about going into uni I promise you it'll be fine it's just I know that there's most likely been quite a long break between you stopping studying for A-levels and you going to uni so if you're feeling like you want to prepare a bit this could be something to help you prepare basically <laughs> So yeah, let me know if you found this helpful and let me know how results day goes. I really hope you get where you want to go. <laughs> and if you don't, you know, it's just redirection. It will work out, I promise. <laughs> I really wanted to go to Warwick Uni, but my firm ended up being Nottingham and I, I love it at Nottingham. So yeah, good luck and let me know how you all get on. Bye.